Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. So, I decided to go mobile for the first time the other day and check out one of the uh, employees over at one of the local gas stations' car. He had a, a Mitsubishi Eclipse that was throwing a P0403. And I thought I had a pretty good understanding. Uh, I grabbed uh, some of the test parameters from Identifix. So that way I could uh, back pin probe the EGR solenoid and see if I was getting the voltage I was supposed to and the ground that I was supposed to. Some things that I learned the hard way was that you, sh you will normally get a 12 volt um, reference on both wires until the EGR uh, solenoid activates the EGR valve and opens it up. And the only way you can do that is to either uh, if it's com if it's controlled by the ground through the PCM, so if it's grounding through the PCM, you can control it using a test light, but you won't be able to do anything with it at an idle. You actually would have to put it on a load test. So there was another test that I couldn't do because I had some scan tool connectivity issues uh, with the Solus, and that was I couldn't command it, the solenoid to open or close, so there was no way to see if electronically it was functioning as it was supposed to. Now, I could have used the vacuum... Uh, gun like that Motocraft one that I have over at work to uh, move the pin tool up and down and see if the diaphragm was opening and closing. I didn't do that and it was also in a hard to get to spot. So today what I would thought I would do is kind of revisit the situation but using my Mercury Mariner. Now I've got two of the uh, wires hooked up right now to the back of the solenoid. I got it back pin probed. Uh, here's the valve itself. And I've got it going up through the window with the magnetic test leads attached. And then I'm going to hook it up to my Klein uh, DVOM. Something else that I wanted to mention was that uh, the other day I had posted a video talking about the MS-906 TS. And I thought it was a little bit too, uh, too fancy for my liking. But you know what? There was a few things that I uh, was told in the comments that it might have to do with the fact that I was testing it on a GM product and GM actually does make you go through and answer all those questions. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the Mariner and see if I can not actuate using the bidirectional functions, the EGR valve to see if the computer is commanding it open and closed. All right, so we got the Max Assist MS906TS. Like I said, I thought it was a little bit over overkill for what it was worth and that maybe uh, it was too much for this tool to handle. Uh, but later, like I said, someone had commented that that's just a GM thing. So right now the scan tool is trying to pick up the VCI pod down there. We're going to connect to it. So this is a Ford product. They do not have a separate um, Mercury manufacturer on this scan tool. So just go into Ford. Right now it's doing a system download of the whole entire vehicle. Wow, this thing's making my gauges go nuts. <laughs> all right, at any rate, so it did go into it a lot faster. I don't know what that was all about. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to show you. It only lasted a couple seconds. But my uh, tachometer and speedometer were going like this while it was trying to communicate and the lights were flashing. I don't know if I like that. It's got to communicate with the vehicle again. So it's taking, it's a process. Okay, so we have EGR valve duty cycle. Oh, I wish you guys knew how incredibly challenging it is to make it to where there's absolutely no glare so you could see what's going on. All right, so we got EGR valve duty cycle and it's got two different cycles here where we can change the percentage. So let me go ahead and hit the plus button here. So right now it should be moving the pintle and you can see at different percentages, there's still no fault. So this could be a very beneficial test to you if you're trying to bi-directionally control or electronically actuate your EGR solenoid. All right, so first things first, I need to make sure, yeah, see my voltage is low because I've had the car on for a while now, but what I need to make sure of is that I actually have this back pin probed 
uh, correctly so that way we're not seeing false readings. I've got the ground hooked up to the strut tower. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start the vehicle before this car dies. All right, so now you can see on the red wire we're charging voltage, which is the same as we had with that Mitsubishi. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the test lead now uh, from the red one over to the black one, which is both sides of the solenoid, just to show you the voltage readings. All right, so now we're hooked up to the other side of the solenoid. We're gonna check our meter. And you'll see we're also at charging voltage. So now I'm gonna place this up here above my dash. I'm gonna close the door, close the hood, but not all the way. And I'm just gonna go up and down the street and we're gonna see if that voltage changes on one side or the other. All right, so I'm gonna try my best to record this information. So you can see now I'm in reverse. As I'm backing up, the voltage is already changing. All right, so as I'm applying gas, the voltage is dropping and then it goes back up. The more demand that I give to the car, the more the voltage drops and then goes back up to charging, but it's a fluctuating voltage. All right, so now I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna turn around, we're gonna hook it up to the other wire and drive back. All right, so now I'm hooked up to the red wire and let's see what happens. Okay, so we are maintaining no matter what speed or how much demand that I have, we are maintaining charging voltage on that wire. Which would mean that the white wire on the back of this solenoid, on the right here, the white wire on the back of this solenoid is our main 12 volt feed wire or power feed. And that the black one with the red tracer or pink tracer that's our signal or command wire. All right, so some things that I think that I learned along the way is that, uh, you know, obviously the voltage test that we did, that you're gonna get charging voltage on both sides of that circuit until you actually put a load behind it. So that was one thing that I learned. Uh, another thing that I learned is that you can test the diaphragm uh, not only bi-directionally using a scan tool, but that you can also use a, a vacuum uh, pump or vacuum gauge to try to pull a vacuum and see if the diaphragm or the pintle you know moves up and down I still don't like the scan tool I gotta be honest so I didn't have to push as many buttons to get into the actual interface or the um, the main uh, computer itself to read all the different types of computers that the vehicle had because we were on an older vehicle um, it didn't require as many uh, tasks in order to be complete, in order to get into the PCM or any part of the system. But it still was tripping me out because it was making my gauges go haywire and nuts. And overall, I thought the boot up time was still incredibly long. It seemed like it had to connect with the vehicle like two or three different times still. And even going into uh, checking the EGR solenoid to see if we could uh, activate it or what have you bi-directionally, we were able to change the percentages of how much it was open or how much it was closed uh, bi-directionally, but it took some doing to get to that portion of the scan tool. So you kind of got to play with it and really dig into it. So if using a scan tool isn't something that you do all the time, it might take you about 10 or 15 minutes to even get to the initial testing phases uh, in order to continue on to the next portion of your flowchart or whatever it is that you're trying to test. So. That's all I got for this video, guys. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Share if you want to share. We'll see you guys next time. Deuces.